Alrighty. So, everything should be on. Making sure. Double checking. Alrighty. So, this is it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the official season three of The Dead Realms. I am your humble DM, Tyler. And we have an amazing cast, some people returning, some people showing up brand new, and a whole new story to tell under a brand new Dead Realm system that we will show you as we play. Um, we will introduce everyone shortly, so without further ado, I think it's best that we just get right into the nit gritty of it. So, you guys' vision is completely black. All of a sudden, you're awakened by a scream of someone falling, and then a splat sound near you. Now I'll roll a, I'll roll a d10. Rerolling a since there's a bunch of you here. Two. All right. So, Ness, your character wakes up and hears this, and as you are slowly awakening from whatever this is other than the small torchlight that was giving you heat to initially wake up you just see a dead body right in front of you and you kind of are spooked from this entire experience and then as you look around you just see nothing but darkness and the light only light source that you see is the light coming from this torch next to this dead corpse if you would like to describe what your character looks like to the audience So the hooded lantern reveals basically what you are currently seeing on this map. Nothing, no new, nothing new information uh, other than what I'm about to tell you. But what you do know is that you don't really know how you end up here, and you don't quite know where exactly you are. All that you remember is that you went into some cave. You don't remember why, um, and then when you wake up, you don't know how you got here or what have you. And as you are trying to get used to the, your surroundings and trying to calm yourself down, you notice other individuals around you. Did you know them? Do you, did you travel with them? Were they the ones that you came in? You're not too sure, but what you know is that you're in a very d dangerous situation. And it's only a matter of time before you start to lose air in whatever cave network you are in. And most likely whoever is around you is probably going to help you out. You see... It seems like to be a demon folk lady, a regular human male, seems to be in his younger years, two halflings, one of them wearing armor, and the other wearing, seems like to be a large sack of what seems like to be cookware hanging from the sides. You also see a dwarven man, and you also see a giant around you. What do you do? You go over here and you start to wake up the giant. Ethan, if you'd like to describe what your character looks like to the audience.
stuff, but I overall I don't look too threatening or anything like that. Alright. So you are awakened by this elven woman, and as your eyes adjust, again, you also don't remember why you're here. All you know is that you walked into the cave, you don't know the reason why, and where exactly you are, you're not too sure. But this pale elf woman is waking you up. You do not know who she is to you, but the other thing that does stand out is that there's a dead body right next to her with a torchlight barely illuminating this area around you. So again, what's around you two is a demon folk woman, a young human male, a half, two halflings, one wearing armor, one having a bunch of cookware around them, and a dwarf. We'll start with the cookware. I like shiny objects. All right, you go over to the halfling wearing the cookware. Fate, if you would like to describe what your character looks like to the audience. You don't know, same thing, you don't know how you got here, what have you, you don't know anyone around you. Who the fuck are you? Oh, buddy, uh, my name's Fee Fi, nice to meet you. I'm um, trying to offer my hand, but uh, I have a shake and I have my hand. There's lots of lines, so I'm just going to kind of stick my hand out there. She seems a little wary, she's, she's like up to your like shin, so she just kind of like picks herself up, and to you it's just like this just like miniature person shakes herself off and with every step her all the pots and pans kind of clatter. I'm <laughs> Alright, oh. uh, Lavina, who do you wake up? Yeah, Lado, you notice that there is another halfling next to you. She's like, she's so concerned with the dead body and backing away from it, she just kind of like bumps his giant pots and pans back back and goes, Oi! Oh, All there's right. another one! Joseph, if you feel like describe what your character looks like. Hi, I am playing Tangerine Tea Drinker, Tangy for short. <laughs> he is a young halfling, about 18 and the equivalents of halfling age. He is wearing a brass breastplate and some other brass armor. He is wielding a large banner, larger than him, with a, a golden fire on it as the symbol. And he has blonde bangs, blue eyes, fair skin, slightly feminine in face, and he immediately wakes up seeing a giant and a very scary looking elf and backs up into the other halfling. Oh, he's alright. He's here with me. Are you sure? Uh, well, would you rather be with him? And she points towards the corpse on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the corpse. He yells out, and he's going to tap his banner on the floor and cast light on it and to illuminate the room just a little bit more. Alright. How big is the create light spell again? It is. Let me check. 
I believe, 10 spaces. Okay, so that'll definitely brighten up this room a little bit more. Um, as you tap and cast your light spell, yes, you, start, you start to see this room a bit more. There's a bunch of bones all around you. You don't know how long these bones have been around, but immediately you kind of see three pathways. One going north, one going east, and one going west as your light spell illuminates this whole room, outshadowing the light from the hooded lantern of Lavina and the dead guy's torch. And upon which you see, start to notice a bunch of the rest of the cast. Um, so let's start with you, uh, Dom, if you like describing what your character looks like as he is kind of awakened from this light. big glasses and the lenses are so big that you can tell this guy would be pretty much blind without them. Uh, his hair is pretty much perpetually messy and uh, when he wakes up he's going to look around and immediately jump back and skitter against the wall. Oh god, where am I? Who are you? Oh god, I knew this would happen. Oh god, no. Yeah, he's freaking out immediately. As you kind of scare the way, you kind of trip over a uh, female demon folk, and this kind of wakes up your character, Braille. If you would describe what your character looks like to the audience. Uh, Sam Plum. He is a is a very tall, about six or five woman, with two large black horns going down the side of her head. A a white ponytail wrapped up with a bow, tattoos on her skin that go all the way down to her neck and and stomach, and a pretty light build, like a sleeper build, if you will. Alright, you are awakened by this startled young human male. As you are kind of awakened, you do see a bright light illuminating most of the light. You see bones scattered all around you. There's a freshly dead body in front of you. Other than that, there's this giant, a pale elven woman, and two halflings. One covered in armor and one covered in frying pans and cookware. Other than that, you do also see, towards the back part, a dwarf that is just waking up. Serious, if you like to describe what your character looks like. Dalvin Mason IV is a dark-skinned dwarf. Um, he is very muscular, very short. Uh, even for a dwarf, he has a very rotund waist. He's wearing he's wearing iron breastplate armor, along with iron metallic gauntlets on his arm, on his fists. And you can tell that there are little added, um, let's say, spikes or whatnot added to his gauntlets. Um, that's pretty much all he's wearing, is essentially just breastplate armor and nothing but underwear on, because something happened to his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you are just waking up from this bright light, and all around you, you just see you see two halflings to your right, about slightly, le slightly um, uh, less taller than you. You see a giant, who is way taller than you. You see what seems like to be a female demon folk lady, who is about 6'5". A scared young human in the background, kind of shivering in the corner, and a pale elf right nearby you as you are coming to your senses. Damn, I got my pants. <laughs> Why am I without pants? Why am I the only one without pants? Did any of you touch me? <laughs> hey, hey, I just, I just. Not I like just that, I mean, just in general. Where are my pants? <laughs> I know that. I just woke up. What is this, a Tuesday night in the afternoon? I don't, I don't have any pants, but there, there are quite a few layers to this dress and you really need to, you know, cover your ass. It's kind of cold for me. I need pants. It's, uh... Well, you can take them off your I, shower. I can... Yeah. You see a fresh corpse in front of you. It's pants right there. 
hope I fit. I really hope I fit. I'm gonna run over it. <laughs> they have like super skinny jeans for you. You went down this hole, rich man. Alright. You're gonna loot him? You're gonna. I'm looting. Alright. You're gonna loot him? For a pants? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> only the pants. Well, I'm yeah, not gonna make good. your I'm not gonna make you roll for it. It's pretty easy to do. He is wearing pants. Um, they'll be a little bit tight on you, but at least you'll have something covering your ass a bit when you put them on. You see that they tore a bit around your thigh area, and you know these are long pants. Not too sure if your character would be used to wearing long pants or not, but uh, it's a little bit tight, so you kind of have to rip some parts off to make it fit, but. It will do for now. I'm gonna kind of rip it right below the calves to make them capris. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right. So, what's going on? Where are we? Who are you? What you see in front of the dead body is other than what seems like to be just regular. This person seems to be a regular Joe Schmo. Um, but you do see a backpack. And when you open the backpack, you see a couple things. You find five rations, a ladder that covers about two spaces worth, uh, a bundle of rope, a health, and two health potions. That is all that you find on this dude. He doesn't look like an adventurer, he doesn't seem like anything. He just looks like an average guy. You don't know how he got here. You kind of look all around you, and even given the light around you, there's you can't really see the ceiling on this area. It's just because this area is so massive. But what all of you, but all that you know, and for each of you, is that you know you're starting to lose breath a bit, and you know that you are in danger. That if you don't get out of here at some point, uh, you might be at risk of suffocation. You check yourselves to see if you have your equipment, and you do, for whatever reason, you have your stuff. But needless to say, you're all in the same similar predicament, and it's only a matter of time before you start dying of suffocation. So at this point, you, other than the bones around you, again, let me just make my highlighter a bit more brighter for you to see. You do see a path leading east, west, excuse me, west this way, east this way, and north this way. At this point, the floor is all yours, guys, and I'll reveal the map as you guys go. It's like a higher platform rock. Yep. You guys can move. Is there a way to check um, to see if there's any airflow out of any which way to see if there's a way out by that path? Everyone will engage in the first roll of the night. Everyone make a perception check. Yeah. Oh, what's our modifier? Uh, your perception modifier. My bad, I didn't, I forgot. It's all good. Uh, roll uh, 12 plus 1, 13. I dropped my 19. 19, okay. 14, 30, 20, 15. 20, 15. 10. 10. Alrighty, majority succeed. I got a, I got oh. a not 20. Hey, alrighty. So, you kind of guys are looking around, see if there's any airflow to kind of guide you guys' way out. There's a little bit coming from every path. There is a little bit more coming from the south path. But as you guys are perking up, and for the ones that rolled higher than an 18 or rolled a nat 20, you hear a bunch of sound, other sounds coming from each pathway other than the flow little flow of air. You also hear like some like crawling noises and some loud it's some echoing sounds indicating that you guys are not alone in this cave. Honestly, uh, I don't know. West is best. I suppose I have a really good idea. How about, how about we stay here? Because this might be a dream. I don't no, know no, right no, now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's really not an option. I mean, you want to die here? You get this in the dream. You're going to be fine, buddy. What's your name? I'm looking 
Kingsley, you're really big and you're scary. What's happening? <laughs> I want to go back for the rope. Yeah. All right, you get rope. I was gonna say, if it turns out we're twenty-five feet of rope short later. <laughs> all right. As you guys continue to move, the space around you changes because obviously the light is coming, sourcing from uh, Tangi's light spell. I don't think there's a problem. Oh, I can grab it. Oh, look at this new tech. <laughs> awesome. uh, but yeah, you do see um, what seems like to be a path this way, and you see that there's a lot of rubble around this vicinity, but you guys think that you guys could easily maneuver and move around it. Alright. Alright. Can I step over it? Um, uh, you kind of had to, like, maneuver a bit, but you're able to get through, no issue. Okay. Hold up, stop right there, feel... I'm gonna pull out the weapon. Hold up, hold up, hold... Hold up. As you guys are moving your light spell, you start to see some creatures that have caught your attention. Uh, let me just roll my first d20 roll here. And this thing uh -oh. is gonna hearing, so I add a d4 to the roll. <laughs> it's the death. Uh, but, um... So, as you are slowly approaching, and as the light spell is slowly moving, I'm just gonna grab this. These things show up, and I'm just gonna reveal them a bit to you as I change them a bit. Oh, right, yeah. The giant goes behind the little girl. Thanks, man. Is that sorry? So, as you guys uh, move closer... Oh, my bad. Uh, there you go. As you guys move closer, you start to see, like, these weird, like, halfling-sized bat-like creatures. Their ears perked up as you guys are moving. And when you... When they're, like, quickly jolting and moving their heads, you see that they have little to no eyesight. And you can tell this creature's, like, indicating on sound. And based on what I rolled, surprisingly, it just, like, wanders around a bit. Um... Look, going towards this way, and it just hits a wall. This creature kind of does the same thing. Oh, it's hitting a wall, but they doesn't seem to see you, and you see that their ears perk up every time, like you move around a bit. Uh, I want to take a cup or something out of my backpack, something small, and chuck it as far as I can behind. Me. Okay, so you chuck it. <laughs> it goes, <laughs> tink, 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 tink. You see the ears of these creatures perk up, and they do this yell, the language screams, <coughs> and as they do, they quickly, in a quick place, like, go towards the sound of the cup. I turn around. Oh. Oh, hold up. She runs. Tornado, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> All right. I'm going to hide, though. I have naturally selfie. All righty. I'm, I'm sticking with the halfling. <laughs> All righty. Go ahead. I want everyone to make agility checks for hide, and then because for the halfling, since they're naturally stealthy, they could decide to add a d6 to the roll. Natural 20. That's the natural 24, 23. Clank, 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 clank. Damn, it's gonna seem like I'm cheating. But I, I got a natural natural 20. But oh boy, <laughs> that's really good. Uh -oh. Five, twelve, nineteen, fifteen. 12, 19, 15. Okay. I'm gonna roll a D. I'm gonna roll my check now. <laughs> I rolled a 21. Alrighty. It looks like, looks like a first combat might happen now. As you guys, as Ladle is quickly running, as soon as Fifi tosses this cup, the sound of the clean pot and pans stir up this entire cavern and as it does it captures the attention of most of these bat-like creatures and it looks like they're gonna charge 
now it's time to explain how Dead Realms RPG combat works. Everyone rolls group initiative. Tell me who's the highest. Is that what no, it's just straight D20 roll. Okay, that's weird, but okay. 19. Alright. 17. Alright. 19 is your guys' highest. I'm going to speed a 19. I do not. So, now we act in group initiative. All of you guys get to act simultaneously first. Um, obviously, whatever spaces your character chose can move according to those spaces. But these things are look like they're going to quickly go up to you guys. So, everyone acts at the same time. What do you all do? Alrighty, so let me just draw something here. So for the Vard class, um, I'll make your circle orange. So for the Vard class, any creature that is affected within five spaces of him, so like about this range, um, as you do a what is called a magical performance, and as long as you're in this radius, you add a d6 to all d20 checks, as long as you're in the radius for the next round. Um, so that's what you're going to be doing. What is everyone else doing? Uh, I, I... I want to walk out of the radius. Uh, I'm going to move right here. Okay. And take a de defensive stance if that is an action I can do. Yep, so you can block as an action. Um, so, yeah. So, sure. you, so you can block as an action, which is good, helpful. Um, so what is everyone else doing? I would like to summon Gleam, which is my smallest summon. Alright, what does your summon look like? It is a holy font, a literal holy elephant, but it's only small size. Boom! There it is. There's Gleam. Yeah. What does your yeah. act what does your act of summoning look like? I tap my what is it called? A banner to the ground and as I do light spreads out as I summon Gleam. Yeah, Gleam is summoned onto the field, and a loud elephant sound uh, echoes in the chamber. And Gleam talks to you. He says, Master, I've been waiting all this time. Oh, God, what are those things? You're going to help us defeat them. Uh, uh, now, go uh, for uh, All right. All right, you get to control them at this point. So. Okay. Can I do something improv uh, improvised? Depends on what Since you want to do. Are... Since these are bat creatures, I want Gleam to do a trumpet sound as loud as they can to try and fuse them. Alrighty. So, okay. I'll just make, roll it dice. The, yeah. Oh, you want to try to deafen them? Is that what you're trying to do? Sort of, since they're bat creatures. Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm, i trying to figure out which check would be best wise. Go ahead and make... Hmm. So this is actively using a sound. All right. So just go ahead and roll a d20 for me, actually. Okay. That's a 18. All right. This loud uh, toot of his horn, uh, his horn, his trunk appears, and the creatures nearby, anyways, clutch to ears to the loud pitch of the noise. All right. Okay. Uh, Ladle, what are you doing? Uh, what is everyone else doing exactly? So half the party acted. Uh, I want to chuck one of my javelins at one of the. I want to chuck a javelin at this bat. Okay, make an attack roll. The first attack of the game. 16 plus my agility is plus, plus two. 18. Yep, 18 is good enough. Alrighty. Go ahead and roll damage from. That's a D8 over D8 plus your agility. Five plus two, seven points of damage. Alrighty. You chuck this javelin at this back creature as it's clutching its ears in pain. The javelin just goes straight right through it, ending its life. So I'm going to put the dead tag on here. Um, so would you like to move? Yes, but I can't see the spaces because of the orange. So I have three spaces I can move So up. you can move up to the edge if you wish, closer to... to uh, Braille's character, yep. Alrighty. L Ladle, Kingsley, Lavina, what are you three doing? Uh, Lavina's gonna step out from behind Fifi just to have like a line 
of sight, and she's gonna reach down into the many layers of cloth and pull <laughs> out what looks like a gnarled, like, branch. And she's gonna cast, um, Elemental Shot at this dude right here in the front. Alrighty. Which damage type would you like to do? All right. <laughs> Make an attack roll. Oh, did the music oh. stop? This is so weird. For my attack roll, I'm sorry. What do I need to roll? D20 plus okay. your spell casting modifier. Oh my god, I'm rolling like shit. Oh no. Ten. Ten. <laughs> It's not good enough, unfortunately. You hurl this ball of acid right over their heads, so and you just hear a splash right in the behind them. Her pale skin kind of flushes out a little bit in frustration. She's gonna kind of reposition herself, trying to get a better line of sight. Alrighty. Kingsley, Ladle, you're the only two that hasn't acted yet. What are you two doing? Okay, so you're holding a block. You're delaying your block. All right, Kingsley, what are you doing? Kingsley is gonna get her behind D5 and hide and peek out, and then uh, say to Lavina, "This is called a focus. We're all gonna die. You miss this again." And he's gonna use word of advice. All right. He one D6, any roll that you use. All righty. So you got an additional D6 you could use for your next D20 check. All righty. Everyone's has acted. Oh, the music did stop. Who was controlling the music? I think it was you, Fate, I think. Yep, I just added more on. Alright, thank you. Alrighty. So, these things are deafened, so they can't really, like, do anything well. So I'll just roll D20 check here. Yeah. This loud horn eventually passes over, however, um, they can't really do act much other than just to get ready to lunge at you. So these guys are going to move here. Actually, I could do this. This I, this I knew about. Oh, okay. I guess that doesn't work. For, oh, he's not that big. <laughs> uh, Gross. And then, other than that, you do hear more uh, instances of sounds coming from the rest of the tunnel from this way more ch -ch -ch echoing from the sound over the right, but it seems like they're approaching closer and closer. Alright, switch over to initiative again. You guys, it's turn to act. They're approaching, but it seems like the loud uh, trumpet horn has deterred them for now. Mm -hmm. I would like to send Gleam forward and make an attack against this guy. Alright, make an attack. So let me re the one space and one d6 so yep. that's going to be a 11 to hit 11 does not hit gleam flies over and tries to smack this creature with his trunk but alas it is unfortunately a bit too too slow for gleam and then for my turn i will like to do an elemental shot against the same one All right which damage type uh, it's going to be fire. Alrighty, make your attack. That's going to be a 13 to hit. The 13 just hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, that's a D8, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, that's going to be 4 damage. 4 All fire damage. Alright, you shoot your ball of fire, and as you do, this creature burns and wallows away in pain as it collapses to the ground to a burnt crisp. Okay, that is my turn. Alrighty, who else get? Who else wants to go up? Uh, can I go? Yep. Uh, does, does, is my action of block still up if I attack or no? Um, it's not gonna be up if you decide to attack. Okay, I'm gonna attack from here. Can I reach it from here? Yes. So this you one. you're using your long sword, right? Correct. Alrighty, so you could. Oh, that's too long. Alright, so you could either attack the one. Yeah. So with your position, you could attack the one in front of you. So go ahead and make your attack, bro. Okay. Uh, 
It's just a flat D20, right? It's D20 plus your power modifier for your melee weapons. 14 plus 2, 16. That hits. Roll your damage. And Are you using one hand or two hands? Two hands. Alrighty, so roll a D10. Add your power mod. Okay, where's my D20? Please, game. <laughs> my D10, please. Anyway, thank you. Okay, not bad. It's a... It's a five. Alrighty. Uh, you cut this thing straight in half. It goes... Zzz! As it just slices in two. Ah, oh, great. Now I got the bad blood all over me. Alrighty. Who wants to go up next? Do I have a clear shot at any of these guys? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you're tall, bro, so you're good. Yeah, that's kind of what I think. <laughs> Alright, you're taking a shot with what? Uh, my short bow, so it's 1d20 plus agility. Uh, yep, 1d20 plus agility. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits, roll your damage. Alright, you shoot him clean straight into the head of this creature as it collapses to the ground dead. That's how it's done, boys. Would you like to move? Uh, yeah, I'll advance a bit. Alright. Alrighty. Oh, this is some real battle music right here. <laughs> Alright, um, because you attacked, your radius is gone, but you get to do it an unlimited amount of times. So, alrighty. Who wants to go up next? Alright. She is gonna do her little, like, side shuffle scooch to get a clear line of sight. And she's gonna, this time, she's gonna do elemental shot again. Alright, same thing, acid. Alrighty. No, I was a nat one. Oof. I'm for four. Four. As you shoot you, as you shoot your elemental shot, um, you accidentally burn your hand, unfortunately, and drop it. As it does, the shot goes wide, almost hitting one of your allies. <laughs> Alrighty. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> At that point, what would anyone else who hasn't gone like to do? Uh, I would like to run up to this bat with three, with three spaces. Okay. That's still alive. And I would like to begin punch with my battle gods. Alright, make your attack. Mm, that is a 12. No, no, I have a plus 3, a 13. 13 hits. Roll your damage. Nice. So... Oh, minimum damage. Uh, that is 4 points of damage. Alright, you wombo combo this dude in front of you and you just punch his head clean off. Boom. Dead. Alright. Uh, Lado, Kingsley, you two are the only ones who haven't gone yet. Uh, I don't really have any action here. No one's injured, right? Nope. Just gonna lean against the wall and watch them work. Alright, Kingsley. Kingsley has given his advice. He is going to hide behind Lado. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty. Now it's my turn. Alrighty. Alrighty. So, this thing is going to go up to Gleam, since it hears its wings flapping, it's going to attack Gleam. Okay. No. Does a 13 hit. That does hit. Alright. It deals 6 points of slashy damage as it slashes Gleam. Gleam is looking very injured. Yep, he slashes the wings 
damage and gleam. At this point, you hear more screeching coming from this direction. As you guys are making all this racket, these things show up more. And they're going to spend their whole turn just trying to get to you. And then you just hear a loud roaring sound coming from the outskirts this way. And that is all going to be it for my turn. At this point, it's you, the turns are up to you guys. What do you guys do as four new enemies approach? I'm shooting the one closest to my eye. Alrighty. That would be this one then. Yes. Uh, it's a 15. 15 hits. Damage. Nine. Nine. You shoot this one clean right through the skull. Would you like to move, sir? Alrighty. Who else is, wants to go next? I would oh. like to go. Uh, if I can. Uh, I will move one, two forward. And I'm going to cast Flame Flower. <laughs> Alright. You burn a spell point. Alright. Let's say do I must make. Uh, you must make. Uh, let me check the actual roll. Uh, flame Flower. An agility check. Alright, they're very good at that. I rolled a 17. Uh, that succeeds. Alright, so... roll damage. Okay. That's gonna be 5, so 15 damage. Oof! Oof! Ooh. That's halved. rough. Yeah, halved. Uh, what does your flamethrower look like? It is this brilliant golden flame that shoots forth in a cone. Alright, this golden flame hits all four of these creatures, and even though they succeed, the damage is so high enough that they still burn to a crisp, killing all four of them. Yes, let's go! Guys, I've like... that five more times. Wow. <laughs> I'm just gonna go like... Alright! The, the young man can cast, can, can cast flames. Great. Alright, what are the rest of you guys doing? You know there's something coming from this direction. I will call uh, Liam forward to me. Alright. Keep them in front of me. Okay. Or Liam. Uh, I want to <laughs> ready a javelin throw until I can see something. Okay. Can I also ready an action to shoot my bow? Sure. But I'm gonna get a little closer, like right here. Sure. Alrighty. Kingsley, uh, Ladle, you two do anything or are you just gonna hang in the back? Uh, yeah, until someone gets injured, there's not much for me to do. Alrighty. Kingsley? The echoes of this loud growl, growl get closer, 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 and um, the echoing of large footsteps approaches as this creature has appeared, a larger version of these back creatures. Wait, what about these two? Right here. Oh yeah. Do they not get La Lavina and uh, Dalvin. Do you two like to do anything before this creature appears in front of you? Dice found. Dice found. Dice found. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen does not hit this creature, fortunately. God 
Please? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that is that is what the party hears is Levita's like, gods, fucking please work. <laughs> and she's gonna go back to smacking it on her hand. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Um Dalvin. You doing I'm anything? Throwing my, throwing my job with. Tack roll. It's sixteen plus two, eighteen. Hits. Damage. So job was damaging. We're all learning here, folks. It's all right. We are test subjects for a new system. Yep. Wait, let me check. Max here. damage. A plus two, ten points. All right, you. As soon as this creature appears, this Lavina tries to cast a spell, but it just goes wired and cusses up the storm. Meanwhile, Dalvin sees this creature and tosses the javelin right up to it. What is everyone else doing? Uh, I'm shooting with my bow because. Uh... Alrighty. Alrighty. Attack. Attack. Go. Okay, hold on. Where's my dice? Uh oh. <laughs> there you go. Found it. Found dice 17. found. Seventeen does hit this creature. Roll damage. Okay, what is the damage of a what let me check? That is one D six plus agility. Alrighty. Yippee! Let's go. <laughs> That's uh, seven damage. Seven damage. It takes that damage. Wow, this thing sank it. Or the other ones were just weak. Alrighty. I think someone else had a held action, right? No? Alright. This creature appears, takes a brunt of those hits as it does, and walks towards closer to Glean. He's gonna make two attacks. First, at yeah. first attack is a dirty twenty to gleam. Yep, that hits. Oh. Gleam takes four points of damage. Gleam disappears in a puff of light. Gleam, with a slash of one claw, vanishes in a ball of light. And as it does, the second claw attack is gonna hit its summoner. Oh, dice fell on the floor. It's okay. I got a second d twenty. I rolled a natural one. It's fine. Um, you, at the lights from Gleam's disappearance, surprisingly distracts it a bit, and it, go, and it just, go, the slash goes wide right above your head. Um, and at this point, the turn is up to the players. What do you guys do? Can I? Okay. Five. Five does not hit. It, the shot goes wide. Uh, can I try to cut this arm off? You could try. Make an attack roll. Okay, let's pray for, like, something high, guys. Let's go. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. Let me check my, my, my modifier. I'm using my longsword, two-handed. Alrighty. So it's all good. Uh, I think a 19 hits. Yes, that hits. Roll your damage. Okay, one D10. Where's my D10? Where is it? It's a diamond shape. Oh, I hate having so many dice. I'm just gonna roll one online. Alright. <laughs> Alright, while you do that, what is everyone else doing? Uh, I will like to cast Flamethrower on the spell <laughs> while not attacking. Uh, yep. will I believe? You could do that. By the way, I rolled a, I rolled a three on my D, don't my D done. Alright, you try to slash his arm off, it leaves a large gash on it, but not enough damage to chop the oh, arm off. sorry. Not three, five. My bad. Five? Still the same thing. Alright. That's fair. Alrighty. Flamethrower. I have rolled a fifteen. Fifteen misses, so it will take a full damage. Oh yeah. That is... Eleven damage. Alrighty. You... Once again, cast your bright flamethrower as it does. Most of this creature's body is burnt to a crisp. It's not looking too high. It looks like it could go down at any given moment. Okay, that is my turn. Who, who wants to go up? I have enough space to get up close, so I will. Alright. I will start punching. Alright. Punch. 
See if you can bring this beast down. 17? 17 hits. Roll your damage. 6 points. 6 points. How do you defeat this large bat-like creature? Uh, I want to say I get a pulse and then I just rip its jaw. <laughs> nice. Uh, as it crumples to the ground from the burning of the flames, you taking advantage, uh, Dalvin, just use your knuckles, just grab onto the jaw of this creature and just rip it off from its head as it as a large gallon of blood drops right on you. It collapses to the ground in front of you, dead. There's my face. Gleam is gone. Uh, I'm gonna start wringing blood out of my beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna take days. You don't know Dwarven culture. Thank you. This is like a wedding proposal. <laughs> I, know I know you don't mean that. Immediately looks alarmed. No, I'm, I'm, I, I That's going to my not, notes. <laughs> I'm not proposing to you. I just you're covered in blood. Yeah, I, that's just, that's yeah. Men men fight in battle. They come back bathed in blood. Women give them cloth, they get married. This is exactly how it goes. Can you not? Yeah. <laughs> Kingsley. Uh, Dares it gives him like the are you fucking serious look for a second. <laughs> she she looks back like that uh what's your character's name, hold on? Lavina. Oh yes, Lavina. Yeah, uh Lavina. And she goes like Hey, uh are you alright? Did you find your hand back there? She thinks for a moment and uh, unties her hair and gives you the tie and just like here to uh, hold my in place. What is happening with all these proposals? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not a dwarf. I'm a dragon thing. I'm, I'm a dragon king. I'm right? dragon king. You mean demon folk? <laughs> no, dude. Did you? Oh, you updated it? Okay, it's fine. It's all good. No, no, I didn't update it. She thinks she's a dragon queen. She ah! Alright, gotcha. Continue. <laughs> she goes, yes, dragon can. Can you see my horns? I can. Anyway. You were saying what? Some for suffocation. Perhaps we should mosey. She's quite close to that call. I agree, too. Alright, let's go. I read past. Well, I guess light was already going. Alright. We'll say you recast it. It's a cantrip, so. Yeah. Oh, it's a cantrip, nice. It's a very useful one. Oh, my flag of war is not active. There it is. Oh. So I, I gotta. Beacon. I gotta shrink it a bit. No! There we go. Alrighty. Alright. I picked up someone. You may continue the journey. I'll move your fog as you guys move your characters. Oh. Yes, can role play if you wish. Man. This game's getting pretty, uh, tight, huh? Does anyone know any good Why did you say that? Oh god, darkness has consumed me. Kingsley. I bet you three gold because of your hat. You're some sort of mage, right? Um, actually, no. I stole this from my mom. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know any magic. Really? Yeah, I could have sworn. I guess I owe you three gold. 
And I'm going to hand him three gold. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Alright, make a perception check. Oh, the darkness. Oh, no. Oh, my bad. Sorry, this fog of war is messing me up. It's a common phenomenon in the dead realm. <laughs> of course. What's your perception check? Four. Four. You don't hear any danger ahead. <laughs> Alright. Can, can we make a perception check while we're walking? Because he just naturally get it. Sure, uh, make a perception check. Okay. A 19. 19. You only hear a very faint airflow coming from further down. Other than that, you don't sense any other danger. I'm catching up for me. Maybe I need to reset. Yeah, me neither. That's weird. It should. No, there, there it goes. goes. Yeah, that's because I'm holding it, so I'm just moving yeah. it where you're moving, so. Alright. Can I sing the tune of God Save the Queen even though that doesn't exist? Sure. <laughs> Great. Oh no. Ladle's being lost in the dark. <laughs> Come back. There you go. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Everyone make a jump. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, as, as, you got, as you guys are going down towards this path, there's a loud shaking in the complete area you are in and rock crumbles behind you blocking the path that you once left you guys continued the path forward and as you do this is where I change the map wabam well it's a good thing we got that extra 25 feet of road yeah. we would have lost it completely if we had just one second I'm just changing the marching order here so now this is like up to scale at this point oh yeah, this one just should be up to scale. Why? Well, don't know why everyone's tokens is smaller now. That's weird. Um, but yeah, maybe this. Maybe copy them over from an upscale map. Maybe. Uh, but now. All right. So this is what you could see. You see that you are now in a more open space cavern, and as you are walk it down you see that the steps end and it breaks off and as you are moving your light spell uh, Tangi you if I could get this fogging work okay as you move you see that you look down and it's just a never ending fall down and um, yeah that's all you see right now with your current light spell active right you drop a rock. Still dropping. Eventually it loses out of the sight of your um of the light spell. Still no sound. Then you hear a very, very, very faint crumple of rock. You could assume that if you fall here you would probably fall to your deaths. Can I assume we have enough rope to get down there? You aren't too sure? You have yet to explore the rest of the areas, yet because of the trajectory of the light spell. Alright. 
you I'll go move to the edge so I can get the light out as far as I can. Okay, let me just go to my tool settings here. Alright, you move close to the edge and you do see like a faint of like the remainder of whatever this pathway was, but you probably have to step a little bit closer to do get a better picture of it. Someone hold on to me with a rope. Hold on to him. All right. uh, I would like to take some of the pants I ripped off. I have an oil flask. I would like to douse that cloth and then anybody got a light? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Let me just throw this. Okay. Let's, right. I will light it with elemental shot and throw the lit. Uh, yeah. You guys have tinder boxes. Shoot, you should easily lit it. You light it like a Molotov cocktail. Which direction would you like to toss it at? Directly forward across the way. Yeah. Uh, downwards diagonally, technically. Is, it, is that what you want to do, uh, Sirius? Yeah, where it seems like the stairs would have All right. continued on. So you go closer to the edge a bit, and then you toss it in this general direction. As it does, it does hit surface, and it shatters for a bit. And then at this point, a little bit of fire appears right over here. It seems like the remainder of this bridge seems to be broken off, maybe due to the course of time or what have you, but the remainder of the bridge seems to be on that path that you toss your oil on. I have an idea. <laughs> I need to rope and throw me as far as you can. <laughs> and I'll pull you guys over. Everyone but myself over there. But the question is, how do I get over there once all of you are there? I have, pull you. I have 50 feet of rope. I have. Okay, so actually, yeah, oh, I oh, sorry. I have 10 50. spaces because I grabbed the other guys and I had yeah. one of my own. Yep. Okay. We can tie our ropes together. So we tie the rope around my way. Oh yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. If one of us falls in, then we can pull ourselves back up. Let yeah, me go yeah. first. I'm the smallest. Well, second smallest. Equally smallest. <laughs> how do we? How do we? How do we measure how far one, we can two, jump? Three, four, yeah, so one space is like legit one space on the grid. Don't know if it appears as a grid for you all, so. It is. Yeah, so okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you can clear up fine, yeah. That's so how do, we, how do we determine how far we can jump? It would be half your movement speed rather than down. Yeah, but he's a giant. So he has a special ability to toss you all, so. Yeah, so I can toss all of you guys. I just can't get myself across. But I think if all of you tie ropes to me, all of you are holding on. No, 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 I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, then I'll just start throwing people. All right. And, and you will go first. All right. So, <laughs> you toss him. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you do, so it does this light spell. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Every, yeah, you use your hooded lantern. Alright, let me reveal some more light to you. What's the range of it? Five spaces? I think so. One, two, three, four. So, like about this much. Yeah, not bad. She she kind of goes up and goes like, "Hey, me that's that, that sounds fun." You're a brave soul. Hey, <laughs> Colby, yeet! <laughs> you land right onto the ground. Uh... <laughs> um, as you touch the ground, um, the actual area that is around you um, starts to move slightly. Uh -oh. Recognizing that this is a little bit unstable. Jeez, this is such a. <laughs> first oh, Welcome to Dead Realm Season Three, my friend. <laughs> okay, DM. What are the chances? DM, 
be honest with me, my man. Sure. What are the chances that we fucking die here? I don't know. Depends on what you guys do. <laughs> all, all, all that you guys know from Fifi's tossing of the rock down is that most likely if you fall, you will probably land on your deaths. So. That's all that you know gathered from that, so. If I still had clean, I could probably blown some of you up. We do have that ladder. No, we don't. Never mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> it would have helped you guys out a bit. But we can't go back now. Oh, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Let me FIFA. check the other side of this. And I yeah, will walk ahead. over. Right. You fully see the light. Alright, let me move the, your Throw light me. here. Come on. I'm gonna counter weight balance the thing. Alright, so. so Alright, so you counterweight. So you see the edge just by getting on the edge over here. Unless you want to move closer. I'm assuming pointing your light towards that general direction. I walk back and I will tell them. I see the other side. But this place is unstable. Did you guys get to the other side? On your own? Mm. How far can you throw me? Yep, all of you do have rope, so whoops, my bad. So I think everyone ties a rope to themselves, because the rope is longer than the gap of jump. So I don't like when I throw you, I don't have to carry you with me, I can throw you land. That can so work. We need more than one person on the platform. Or we we only need two people. We need the dwarf to carry you. And then once I'm there, we can get everyone else across. GM, do I get a strength work. boost from my class ability? Say again? Do I get a strength boost from my class ability for something like this? You do not. Okay. God, I fucking hate that. I math. still got this. <laughs> remember, we uh, have fate die. Yeah, remember, you guys all do. Remember, you guys do all have fake die, which is a reroll on a d20 check. However, if you fail that check, the outcome is worse. So you do have a chance to fix it, but the outcomes could be worse if you fail the second okay. time. So. Can I, do I see a stone? Say again, uh, Braille. Do I have, like, a stone that's lying around? Or yeah, there's some gravel around that area, yeah. No, like, like a big stone. A big stone? No. You only have like a rock size that is enough to fit your hand, but that's really it. I think it's the ladder I have. The ladder I you have could probably fit up to three spaces, give or take. Alright. Uh, she's gonna use her rope and tie the ladder off at the end of this to make it longer. Alrighty. So, let's see. Alright, you tie it up, no issue. You tie the ladder to the rope. And then you want to set it. <laughs> Toss. Yeah, I'll throw anyone who wants to be thrown. But before I throw the dwarf, I want to make sure I have a rope tied around my waist. Alright, you do. Yeah, that could easily be done. Okay, so what's the plan again for, for you? Okay. Uh, how are we getting you over again? So, I throw the dwarf over with a rope tied around my waist, and the dwarf is so strong, he can just pull me over. Uh, Kingsley is going to tie his rope to you, and he's going to tie it in a very specific way. He's doing a box knot, and then he's going to hand it in and go up and say, Well, this, this is a box knot, so you don't really have to worry about him falling through the rope. It's all you! And then he can use word of advice, which, uh, all right. he can use, use a deep. Uh, a d6 on any of your d20 rolls. Yep. 
So that's two uses of your ability at this point. So. Delvin, yeah. Yep. We gotta move. Yep. You guys move your tokens. All right. Later, I want to ask about. All right. You I haven't told anybody about that. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. didn't say it, but I say All right. You ye him. Ye. Boom. Lands. Again. The. The platform underneath the three of you shimmers a bit. Okay. If it, if it, if it is any con consolation, the few seconds we got to fight with each other was really great. <laughs> Nonsense. If I die here, we'll get through this. Stop it! I smack him. <laughs> <laughs> I will not waste my time hearing such negativity. <laughs> all, all, all right. Ow. <laughs> I, I think you smacked me on the arm or something because I don't know you can reach my face. <laughs> Four foot nine. I'm six foot. I'm six foot five. Right in the solar plexus. <laughs> 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 Straight uh, liver shot. Alrighty, what are you guys doing? A giant or dwarf, a half a hand, dragon folk. Well, no, we just get that. We just get you over, and then you throw these two over. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So I think now is when you, everyone else ties themselves off, hands meet their knots, and then I get pulled over by the dwarf. Sounds good to me. All right, Dalvin, make a strength check. Excuse me, power check. My apologies. Check. Yep, you do have a D6 to add to it, and you do have fake died if you mess up, so. I do have a D6 to add? Yeah, because of word of advice from uh, Kingsley. Okay. So. That is... With the D6, that is an 18. 18. All right. That succeeds. You pull him over. As you, the giant lands on the platform... The platform is slowly starting to be coming unstable at this point. You think one more Hurry person? Up Hurry up a throw! All right. Uh, all right. So. No, you don't see it based on your current <laughs> position. You don't. All right. You go point to the very end. All right. You see like glimmer. You see a glimmer of a platform over there. <laughs> Do you know that scene from the Groots? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm throwing. I'm throwing. Who are you throwing? Uh, Alright. Okay. Yeet! To toss of fate. Yeet! Boom! Right at the very end. You, it looks like you're almost not gonna make it, uh, Tanju, but you just made it. And your light spell moves. There's he more? Is shaking. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me get rid of this fog nearby that platform at this point. And I, the people on the second platform currently cannot sleep, see unless they try to plot their way. This is a dead end. Well, get, well, I haven't adjusted anything yet. I gotta readjust everyone's light sources here. Dalvin has a hooded lantern. Alright, so let me just get rid of Hooded lantern. So you instantly proc it. Alright. Wait, what wait wait day? Oh okay. One second. I'm fixing it. Sorry. Uh, there you go. Now you can see that platform. Uh can I become yes. Sorry. Alright, it's, it's fine. Alright. Uh, yeet. Ah. yeet! Boom! You land on this platform. Alright, 
Is it also unstable? It's yeah, both of these things are stable currently. We're gonna like hot potato this thing. It's gonna be just like the last <laughs> I love I love that puzzle of the rice, the chicken and the wool. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Alright. So meanwhile, um how are you guys on the first on the entryway, how are you guys gonna get across? Gotcha. All right, just want to clarify. All righty. You guys are gonna pull them over. Yes. All three of them. I think. So I think what has to happen is we have to do all three, and then I have to immediately throw. No, them no, off. throw me, and then just pull them over. I'm pretty sure you could do it oh, by yourself. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I throw Dalvin now, and then I pull them over, and then Dalvin pulls me, and then we're back where we started. Yep. Hold on, hold on. Let's find the next platform before we do that. <laughs> I like the panic uh, I'm hearing. <laughs> Fifi. Fee, or uh, Fi. Fee, 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 F. Fifi. Fee, no, okay, not Fifi. Fuck. Fee, fuck. Kenji. TG. Kenji. Can you can you go ahead and just walk a little forward so we can see, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And he is going to walk to the Enlarge. very edge. And right. he, he is right. shaking <laughs> closer to the edge. Oh look, it's another platform. Oh. The darkness. It's okay. You see another platform, it seems. There's another platform. And ah, I'll, great. Walk, I'll walk back to the middle. All right. Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. You tossed Alan. Yeet. Oh nope. I grabbed the fog. I need to grab the token. There we go. That's oh. his lantern. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun here in Dead Realms. Yeesh. Yeet. You're tossed over. <laughs> this one is slowly becoming unstable. Very slowly though. Okay. I would like to leave my hooded lantern back before I get thrown. I would say that. Sure. You leave your hooded lantern back. Alright. So now it looks like it's safe to pull them towards you, Fifi. Alright. Make a power check. It is just two halflings in the regular size. Sorry. If things happen. Sure. Sure. It's all good. Or what? Yep, she could teleport as an elf. Okay, that's right. Alright, if if you use the fake die and if you fail, you are risking three of them dying right now. This is intense. You don't what have to pull them one at a time. Oh. Nope. That's the people with the characters, not me, man. <laughs> yeah, we. Lavina's gonna kind of peer over the edge, holding her hooded lantern and like seeing that it is just unending darkness, and it looks up at uh, P5. You should pull these two smaller ones along. If I need to, I'll take a running jump and teleport across. Okay, I'll do that. Alrighty. Make your power check. Four. Four! Oof. That's rough. So as you are... Sorry. Go ahead. Is he using a fate die to reroll this one? Yeah, because the, the first one was... Yep, and then the next one was a four. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so can at, I can I untie myself? At this point I would like Ladle and Kingsley to make agility checks to see wait, if they wait, look wait, wait. <laughs> at this at this point, as FIFI is pulling on the rope, the weight of the equipment of both Kingsley and Ladle um, are just a little too much for FIFI and the rope begins to snap, I need you two to make agility checks or else you will fall to your deaths. 
you. <laughs> and Holy. Did Lavina try and like reach for and snatch one of them up by their collars to get them onto some footing? You can choose one. In the time that this is happening right now. <laughs> oh, oh, this is Telltale. Oh, oh, what do you choose? This is an awesome gonna, first session. I'm gonna go with Kingsley because he has less stuff and Lavina's not super strong. Alrighty. So go ahead and make an agility check. Uh, ladle. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How is it always? <laughs> Fate, please. Sorry, Fate, make an agility check. Fate's definitely. Fate's definitely. There, can I... Oh, he's oh he's not here right now. Oh no, <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. Oh <laughs> no! Oh my God, I think this is a perfect time for a break. <laughs> Yeah, let's take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. This is important. So we'll be right back. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm on dead room. We'll be right back. Are we out of, are you on a break right now?
everything on at this point. All right, and we're back. It is now time to decide what happens to Fate's character. So... And before we, before we do that, I, I, I feel connected to this character. 
can simply <laughs> offer his hand out and give his word of advice, and his word of advice is... <laughs> he's gonna give you a decent... What does he say? You cut out there. Grab hold! <laughs> all right, so all right, fate. So here's what's happening. Uh, Fifi tries to pull the the two of you. However, due to some bad rules, including a fate rule, and since he failed the fate rule, the consequences are worse. As he was pulling you, you were dangling a bit from the edge until it snaps, and both of you were falling. And Lavina only had time to grab Kingsley and not you. So I need you to roll an agility check. But you do get a d6, and you do have a fate die if you fail the first time. So at this point, otherwise your character could be at risk of death. So we'll see what happens. So go ahead, bro. You rolled a 22. Hey! Nice. So as soon as Kingsley says this, this inspires you a bit to try to survive. And as you do, at the very last second, it seems that one of your pa one of your pans catches like the legs just a little bit but it gives you just enough time to climb right back onto the platform before the rest of the leeway um collapses you almost died right then and there she holds up the frayed broken rope to uh be five seconds hey, hey what we'll white ideas oh you gotta hold on to someone else what about kingsley Alright. <laughs> Sick. We go down, we go down together. <laughs> I don't want to go down at all. Give me any advice, Kingsley? He's out of advice. He just used his last one to save yeah. Ladle. <laughs> Alright, but I can fall down with D20. Alright, roll that D20. <laughs> roll that D20, bro. Alrighty, you oh. successfully pull both of these halflings down to your platform. The platform is rocking a bit, but it's not enough to like make it unstable. The only one who hasn't made it across the first precipice is Lavina. You jump across, and as you jump halfway, right before you start to begin to descend, you decide to teleport right next to Fifi. And as you do, the platform at this point is now becoming even more unstable as it once was with just three people. Dalvin? Yeah? Oh, Paul. yeah. Uh, I have a long pole. How long, is, how long does that go, actually? Um, it goes... Hold on, I'm gonna draw it for you here. That's also in my gear. Uh, wait, that's that's a different color. So let me just make that a different color so you can see it. There we go. So it's about like this long. So. All right, I'll keep that in mind. But yeah, I'll just roll my power check. Yep, roll a power check. You do have fake dice if you fail it. So. And we can assist you. Fifteen. Fifteen is just what you needed. So you pull with your strength pulling this giant towards you guys. Fifi, as soon as you come on this platform, the as soon as you come on this platform, it's the same thing as the previous platform, it's slowly becoming unstable. Oh. Uh I know where it is. It's about right like right here. Yep. Yep, it's right over here. Alright, you do so. <laughs> Oh, I didn't grab Kanji. Oh, God. That looks like the end. Boom! You, you've had the path to the end. Um, I'm gonna light a torch. Alright, you light your metal torch. It is as big as a hooded lantern. Yes, I... Did All you right. bring my hooded lantern with you? 
Alrighty. It looks like the path is almost there. It just comes down to a few die rolls. Alright, uh, well, Mr. Oh, the dragon girl, I'll stay here. Oh, you have to become your dragon girl. And I got dragon again, bro. Ha ha Yeet. Also, I gotta move this fog circle a bit. Yeah, and then you pull up and I throw up as they come. Alright. Alrighty. Wanna... Make a power check, man. Oh. Alright, so a seven's not doing it. I'm doing my fate. Oof, this could be worse. That's an eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Nice. You pull. Nice you pull them. Boom. Boom. Slowly becoming unstable. Yeet. Ladle across the way. Cling, clang, pong. <laughs> Alright. Now it's just Lavina. I don't know if I can. That ta it takes a lot of magic. Uh, Alright, well, give me your rope. You give me your rope. I'm gonna take the rope off the giant. I'm gonna tie my other cloth to it. Okay. Alright, make a power check, bro. No, one second. I'm gonna make it make it a little bit better. Uh, yeah. Don't don't look. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna just make it a little bit wet by urinating on it a little bit. And I'm gonna <laughs> okay. It says I can only teleport. It says I can only teleport once per encounter. Was that the once? The yes. Encounter? Okay, I just wanted to double check, so I wasn't just saying shit. <laughs> nope. All right. It's a fourteen. Fourteen. Um. How am I gonna rule this? Um. He is holding on to the rope, but he rolled a 14, though. It's insufficient. Well, can I pull it back and then tie my javelin to it and then do it again? Uh, um, so, if you wish, Fifi, you could do your performance to add the d6, if you wish. So, add a d6, see if it's... it could assist you. That's a 2, so 16. Alright, you succeed in pulling Levina over. <laughs> no, she just the just end. Disgusting. You were supposed to take the end off and then <laughs> the rope. No. Uh. Are you fucking serious? Why did you? Why is it wet? What did you do? I can't, I can't make that throw by itself. It wouldn't have made the entire length. I had to make it wet to make the path. Don't worry, I'm sorry. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Please don't drop me, Fifi. Alright, Fifi, you toss her. Boom. <laughs> Alright, yeet. Last power check. Your last power check. Last power check. Actually, can I do it because I have a fate dice? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so you make the uh, check then. Um <laughs> I would say I would say since everyone's gonna help bring the shine over, I'm not gonna make you roll this last check. So you pulled this giant Fifi over and boom, you guys have made across this puzzle. She she goes over and she fucking she fucking hugs Dalvin and and Fifi. She goes, oh my god, thank you. Ah. Oh, dear gods. We did it. No, if we die. Sorry. Go on, sorry? No, sorry. Because if we die in the next room, I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> now, let's clear this dungeon. As, 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 you, as you guys are slowly like recollecting yourselves after that horrifying experience. You do see, strangely enough, some staircases that lead upward. Hmm. Also, what are you going to say, Fabiana? Fabiana's going to walk over to Kingsley amongst the commotion and kind of put her hand on his head. Are you okay, young Kingsley? Thanks for saving me, though. That was really scary. I want to go home. Good job, Kingsley. I wasn't going to let you fall. 
<laughs> you weren't, I was I. It's okay, Kingsley. We got your back. She's gonna cut us out. You don't have to worry about it. He's terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Still scared. He's gonna, he's gonna take your word for it. He's hiding behind you now. <laughs> Alrighty. You guys walk up these stairs. And as you do, let me pull up the next map. The final one of the evening. Mm. Gonna be the same puzzle over again. <laughs> no! But, by the way, no! that puzzle was inspired by the one scene in Lord of the Rings where they have to cross over a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why I almost called them stairs. So I, uh, I said it when I was muted. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys were here. I was waiting for a demon. I was just... Alright. As you go up the stairs, you go to what seems like to be a laboratory or a study room. You're not too sure what this room is. But as you open the door, you realize that like you're opening a you're pushing through a bookcase as a door. So this was definitely like a secret door of some sort. But other than that, you just see this whole area like trash and the only thing like lighting up is like some weird glowing stone it seems on the table closest to Fifi and there's a door that's closed alright you try to find you pick up the stone and you see that uh, as you look at it go ahead and make an intel intellect check for me the first intellect check of the season I'll also get into it. Well, let's do see what Fifi has first. Okay. Eleven. Eleven. Um. You know that this is pr a pretty common item. Um. You look around. You look out. You pick up this glowing stone, and as you look at it, you're like, "Oh, this is a shiny." Stone. It's a small, uncommon magic item that basically allows you, uh, basically one space of light all around you. And it is a magic item you can add to your inventory. A glowing rock. Don't yeah. worry, guys. It's just a shiny stone. As you put the stone in your pocket, the light shines through your clothes. That's pretty cool. Is that a shiny stone in your pocket, or are you just having to see me? <laughs> hey. It's a shiny stone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Other than that, there's a door, and there seems to be like bookshelves. All the pages are old and tattered, and there's nothing really of interest on either desk. Uh, I'd like to push the door open. You push the door open? Okay. Let me reveal the next one to you. And at this point, um, the light spell from. Tangie is going to light up basically every single room you go into, so it's not going to be an issue. Um, you open the door, it seems like to be a tattered bedroom. You see a broken dresser, a vanity set that's quite empty, but and a dirty bed. But really enough, there's like three skeletal uh, maids seem to be acting as maids like try to clean up all this broken stuff. As soon as they see you, they kind of scurry and like exit out of the room. Someone's into some weird things. That would terrify. That was weird, but all right. Skeleton maids can't reach. You don't know that. I don't. That's. You know what? I'm just gonna follow my philosophy here. As everyone is getting closer to the door, I want everyone to make a perception check. Okay. Your mom never told you about the skeleton maids? No, we didn't have a skeleton. I don't have a mom. Eighteen. Eighteen. Five. Five. I got my dice on the floor one sec. Eighteen. Eighteen. Three. Oof. Eight. Fate's luck was wasted it all in the fucking bridge, man. Like, about 13. 13? Alright. You guys hear just footsteps, like, 
walking away from the door that you guys are currently at. Exit out of, we did just exit out of a dungeon in their place thingy. I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be very happy to see that they escaped. Let's well, be honest, it's probably a skeleton. Do you want to talk to a skeleton? At this you point, well. at this point, um, Tangi, you hear a loud ruckus coming through the door as if someone's trying to like force entry into your door. Can I try in the pie? At this point, I want everyone to roll initiative for me. Okay. Okay. So group initiative, see who rolls the highest, and you try to beat my initiative. I got sixteen. Sixteen. Two. Okay. Two. Oof. Nine. Oh. Nine. All right. So I got to so look. Sixteen is the highest. All right. Oh, that fell out of the tray. All right. I rolled less than that. So you guys get to act before they get to try to enter the door. What do you do? Would it be an action to open up the door? Yes. Okay, I'm going to... Can I hold a spell? You cannot. You're using action to open the door. Okay, but can I hold a spell until the door is open? Sure. What spell would you like to use? I would like to hold flamethrower. Alrighty. You're holding the flamethrower spell until the door opens. I'm ready to get shot. Alrighty. Which door are we going? Uh, right, right. Okay, I'm already a job up there. I don't have enough space to get there. Alrighty. I am going to try and hide. Is that agility? Yep, so it's an agility check. Where are you trying to hide? Uh, behind this, these boxes here. Okay. Right, next to the dresser. That is a 10. 10? You assumed you're stealthy. I am hidden. <laughs> uh, what is everyone else doing? Mm. Ladle, Kingsley, Lavina. Moving back. Kingsley is going to hide behind Lavina, and he's going to open up a notebook and start flipping through it and start muttering. Okay. Lavina's gonna like scooch her and Kingsley back a little bit, and she's gonna um, hold out her. She's gonna hold her quarterstaff in a defensive position, kind of guarding Kingsley. All right. So you take the block action. All right. Yeah. Door forces open. It's four skeletal guards. You cast flamethrower. All right. Okay. I gotta make agility check. DC 16. I only rolled a 14. I got... Okay, that fails, so they take 15 damage. Oof. Damn. I rolled all five. <laughs> you incinerate most of them, but it doesn't seem to do enough damage to them. At this point, javelin throw and attacks can trigger at this point um, for... Excuse me. Sorry, I misspoken. Um, currently, um, only... Dalvin can see him, so if you want to toss to your javelin, buddy, you can. 14? 14 does indeed hit him. Roll damage. Which one are you taking, top or bottom? Top. Okay. 5 plus 2, 7. 7. All right. You toss your javelin, and as it does, it goes partially through it. It takes some of the knockback. Uh, you get the feeling that, like, this piercing probably won't affect a skeleton as much. But you do, like, take an arm away from the skeleton above. And when I see them, can I try to identify any weaknesses or anything? Make an intellect check. 21. 21. Yeah, these are reanimated skeletons. You do know that anything that stabs, pierces, won't affect them as much. 
use blunt or magic, I think. Uh, oh yeah, that's, that's what he's shouting. Alright. Um, at, <laughs> at this point, uh, I think V5 was holding the attack, yes? Yep. Alright, make an attack against one of them. Alright, that hits. Which one are you hitting? The one that's most damage or one of the three? Alright, attack roll. Seven damage. Uh, you're using your crossbow, yes? Yeah. Same thing, you take out a rib from this creature. Alright, I will mob attack you now. Okay. Uh, a dirty 20 to hit. That hits. I deal 16 total points of damage. Jesus, I'm gonna spend two armor points to reduce that All right. to two damage. Alright, you reduce your armor, and yes, we're doing armor, similar to Daggerheart, and you reduce some of the armor as the armor takes the brunt of your attacks. As you I absorb... You're wearing heavy armor. Yep. Jeez, uh... that would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you use two of your three slots, though. Alrighty, so now it is your guys' turn to act. What do you do? Can I climb over these dressers and kind of get it like a, like a, like a jump attack on one of them? Sure! Throw you if you want. <laughs> sure, throw me! I don't think you should just go like... I'll do, yeah. All right. I'll do damage to them and then you can attack. Alright, make an attack, throw make me. an attack roll. <laughs> yep. Oh no, the music. Three? Yeah. You, t you, as you toss her, um, your, the leg, her leg, uh, I can't speak, uh, Sam's leg gets caught up, trips over, and takes a fumble. Do I take any damage or am I good? Uh, I'll roll a d4 of damage. <laughs> no! <laughs> All right. Do you Listen, take two? Realistic. You take two points of fumble damage. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack them now. All right. You stand up. Not piercing. All righty. Make an attack. <laughs> okay. Let me see. <laughs> Let's go. Nat twenty. All right. Nat twenty. Roll your damage and times it by two. Okay. For a critical Where's hit. The D10. There you go. Which one are you attacking, by the way? Uh, bottom left one. Bottom left one? Alright. 12 damage. 12 damage. This skeleton clatters to the ground as it collapses. Boom. Alrighty. Who wants to go next? I will move up and block. Alrighty. Uh, Kingsley, Lavina, Dalvin, what are you three doing? Well, I can only move up since I was told piercing is ineffective, so that's what I'll do. Alright, you want to move closer? You can spend your action to get closer to them. Oh, another three? Perfect. That's yep. So you dash up to them, up close and personal. Alrighty. Uh, Kingsley, uh, Lavina, what are you two doing? Alrighty. Yep. Alright. Alrighty. You pull out your wand for your turn. Kingsley, what are you doing? Um, if there isn't anything else to pull up, learn, you probably just hide it. Alright. <laughs> Make a agility check. Uh, is there anything else to learn with an intellect check? Nope. Based on that previous check, nope. Okay. Alright, so we'll say you'll take the block action. Alright. Yeah. Alrighty. The skeletons are gonna do one attack against Sam, one attack against uh, Tangi, one attack against Dalvin. Does a 16 hit any of you three? 16 yeah. does hit me. 16 does uh, hit you. Yeah. 
Alright, so I hit all of you. Four. Not good. I rolled low. I only deal four points of damage to each of you. I'm gonna reduce it by by one with one armor point. Alrighty. Because I already took damage. Alrighty, that's all good. Use your reaction to reduce some of the damage. Would you like to reduce any of the damage, gentlemen? I will not. Alrighty. You hear another ruckus coming from the south door and bunging in. It's a bunch of skeletal cooks. Holy shit. <laughs> a virus. And they're going to spend their turn just trying to get up to you guys. It is now your guys' turn. What are you doing? There's skeletons circling all around you. Lavina's going to whip around and she's going to cast Acid Splash. <laughs> Alright. So, that's a level one uh, spell, right? Oh, I remember now. All right, go ahead, make your attack. These guys are not wearing much clothes, so. Sixteen. Sixteen hits. Roll damage. Yeah. All right. Is it like a cone or just like a? You create a ball of acid splashing your enemies. Make an attack roll against one creature, so it'll be the one on the front. On a hit, takes 1d6. Any creature near the affected creature takes 1d4. Alrighty, so these two will be affected then. Yeah, you could also go for the one middle to affect all of them. Oh, yes, the one in the middle. I'm all sorry, right. I'm staring at, at like four different pages right now. Oh, no. You're good. Yeah, that's fine. Roll your d6 and then your d4 at the same time. Alright, so what damage did you do? Two. Two damage? Okay, for the main target, what about the rest? Oh, I rolled them at the same time. I'm sorry, that it's one each. One each. Oh, no! This, this dice, these dice that I have are just absolutely... They're a curse. curse. Get a new set of dice. <laughs> Get a new set of dice. Um, you do your acid splash. You thought it would do more. It did a little bit, but not as much as you expected. Ladle, there's some enemy skeletal cooks approaching you and your allies. What are you doing? Uh, I don't have any offensive magic. I can move one square and stuff. So I'm just going to hold an action and smack the one that comes back to me. Alrighty. <laughs> um, what is everyone else doing? Kingsley? Sam? Dalvin? Uh, 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 gone. I was just going to punch the person in front of me. Alright, tack roll. Ah, uh, 19. 22 to hit. That hits. Roll your damage. 5 plus 3, 8 points. 8 points. You bludgeoned this thing to perfection. You basically sub-zero Scorpio punch him through his ribcage and just pull the skeletal out of him, killing him. Seems like bludgeoning seems to have more of an effect on these creatures. Um, am I near Fifi? You are not near Fifi, no. Never mind. Uh, I will just use my movement to try to go towards the cooks. Alright, so. Alright, you can get up out there. Alrighty. Kingsley. Uh, Sam. Uh, what are you four doing? Yeah. Um, well, you have a light crossbow or a hand crossbow? It's a short bow. Short bow? Yeah, switching into your shield at this point would cost you your action. Alrighty, you pull out your shield, ready to go. Uh, Sam, uh, Tanji, Kingsley, what are you three doing? I am going to... Hmm. How much does a punch do if you're not like any special class? 1d4 plus your modif power modifier. But bludgeon, it would be bludgeoning damage. Right? Yeah, yes. I'm going to punch it. Alright, make a punch attack. <laughs> uh, okay, that's a that's a sixteen. That hits. Roll your damage. One d four plus your power. 
Okay. If I could get my D4 from the small ass. <laughs> from the casing. small ass casing. Okay, not bad. Six damage. Six damage. You bludgeoned this thing, punching one of this rip cage out. It's not looking too good. Alrighty. While you, while you do that, uh, would you like to move? There are no opportunity attacks, by the way. So. Oh okay. I was about to say. Yeah, there are no uh, opportunity attacks in this game because that seems lame. So. Move right around here. Alrighty. Uh, Tanji, Kingsley, what are you two doing? Uh, Tanji will back up uh, by the skeleton, so I can get full range on these guys, and I'm doing another flame fire. Alright, let me make it check. Two out. I failed. Careful, Tenji. If, if you move too much, you're down. You'll be dead. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, that's a agility save and throw. Of yeah, I failed it. Newbie. I failed uh, it. They take nine damage. You incinerate the rest of their bones, reducing their bones to what is now charcoal. Burning them to a crisp. Okay, I'll move a tiny bit more back. Alrighty. If I can grab right about right. Alrighty, Kingsley, what are you doing? Kingsley is going to. So, for record, he has a round shield on him at all times, but I think this would be a really funny uh, way to do this. He's going to turn around, steal a cooking pot cover from Logan's backpack, and kind of hold it in front of him. <laughs> to hit somebody with it. Okay. All right. All right. The skeleton cooks turn to go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ladle, you can do your attack now if you wish. Can I also attack I attack with my... Sure. You two can make an attack against the skeletal cook. more. Make your attacks. Uh oh. I'm here. Yep, make your attack roll, bro. Yeah, you got your attack. This cook steps up to the plate. Both hit, both you roll damage. <laughs> I love Mr. Shell. That is four damage from my round shield. Alright. And that's four damage from my prime. Alright, total of eight. You not and they're both bludgeoning, so it deals even more damage. So you guys, with the with right teamwork, cook up a dish of destruction against this chef cook, as this cook is now dead. <laughs> Alrighty. One, two, three, four. Alright, so this one in front of you is going to pull out a, a chef's knife and try to stab you with it, uh, Dalvin. Does a 14 hit you? Yeah. Oof. I shall deal three points of piercing damage, stabbing you. Alright. Everyone else have basically used the rest their action to move closer. Uh, it is now your guys' turn. What are you doing? Punch back. Punch back? Alright. Sure. I will draw that. Yep. Go ahead and make your attack, uh, Sirius. 16. 16 hits. Roll your damage. 8. Alright, eight damage. Bludgeoning. Severely injuring this skeleton. Killing it. Hey, as it crumbles to the ground. Yes. Uh what's my special attack with slashing weapons? It would be slashing attack. So you make one attack roll against all enemies within one space of you. Okay. Uh so I'm gonna move Hold on. I can't see the squares. Uh, one, two, three. Yep, you can four. get. Yep, you can get about there. Yep. And I'm gonna do a slashing attack. All right, spinning slash, make an attack. See if you hit both of these guys. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, that's a. That's a. Hold on, I'm trying to do math. Uh, that's a 16. 16 hits both of them. Roll your damage. Okay, I'm two handing this, by the way. Just that's fine. I'm assuming you're going to be two handed unless you do something otherwise. Fair enough. Ah, uh, that sucks. That's only a four damage. Oof. You slice part of their uniforms and part of their bones go a little bit out. But they're not perturbed by your spitting attack as thought as you expected. Mm, okay. okay. Alrighty. Uh, be... uh, what is everyone else doing? Henji is going to move to the side wave his banner through the air and is going to use it as a reflavored wand to shoot a radiant wave of energy towards it. Alrighty, so what spell is this? It's the it's a wand attack. Oh, a wand attack, I get you. Alright, make your attack roll. That is 18, that's 21 to hit. Hits, damage. Then takes 9 damage. 9 damage. It takes radiant a... Damage. Yep, it takes radiant damage. As it shimmers a bit, almost unstabilizing its form. You can tell it took a good effect against it. Okay, that's my turn. That's your turn. <laughs> Meanwhile, gifts are being posted in the Discord chat. <laughs> um, what is everyone else doing? Uh, as this skeleton kind of like rolls up on the Mina and she sees uh, uh, Sam roll it behind and smack him out of pure reaction in fight or flight, she's going to cast. Um, we never gave it a name. She's gonna use her starting ability to take some life away. Alright, make it a sack roll. Cool, make it a sack roll. While well, I look up the name of this ability for you to write down. <laughs> you realize like, we never gave it a name? <laughs> oh no. By the way, hers is a custom class, so that's why names are not being remembered immediately. D20 plus your spell modifier, I'll say. 21 to hit. That hits. Roll your D8. Okay. Where is it? Okay. Alright. Two. Two damage. Um, your build... Oh yeah, we didn't name it yet. We'll workshop it later. Um, uh, you deal two damage to it. What does your disability look like, exactly? So far, you guys have seen Lavina cast from her wand, but as it comes up in her face, she kind of sticks her hands out, and her right hand kind of hits its chest, and you see, like, whatever whatever is keeping it together, you see some of that sucked out into her, into her hand. Alright. She is draining the life force of the skeleton. As it does, the necrotic energies from the skeleton cease as the skeleton falls dead on the ground. Oh. You could call it draining foam. Well, there's a second there thing, too, so. Yeah. It's all good. Um, but you drain the life force of this skeletal cook. I didn't cook. <laughs> Alright, what is everyone else doing? Kingsley, did you gun yet? Ladle? Oh, I'm gonna smack him. Alright. You move one to get in range and you smack them. I don't have to get range. Oh yeah, you're in two spaces, yeah. I forgot about that. You twelve? Uh yeah, that I'll that'll hit. They're just wearing a chef's uniform, so. Four damage. Four damage. You smack this chef around, busting up a rib or two. This skeletal is not looking good, especially from that bludgeoning attack. Hey, right, King. Fun. <laughs> Uh, when you say that, King Lee's just gonna start swinging his pan around, screaming, and trying to smack it. <laughs> Make an attack roll, you do get a d6 to the roll. Uh, 13. Does a 13 hit? Uh, yeah, that hits. That's 16 with that d6. Yay! Alrighty, roll damage. 
that is both two damage. Alrighty, it's just enough to defeat it. You run and you scream out, and as you do, you charge and bash the skeletal cook as it collapses, as its bones scatter all over the place. Whoa, good job, little man. As he's screaming for his life while hitting it. <laughs> You're doing great, Kingsley. All right. Doing great, buddy. The skeletal's gonna go up to. Well, I'm gonna roll a d20. Odds is Dalvin. Even is um Tanji. It's even, so I'll try to stab Tanji now. Okay. Can I use my reaction to take it? Oh yeah, you want to interrupt? Sure. <laughs> So, yeah, so you can use the interrupt action to be the new attack target. Um, a 22 to hit. That hits. Alrighty. I only... I only deal three points of stabbing damage to you. That is perfect. As, as you jump into the way, this skeletal cook stabs you right in, right in the stomach area and pulls the chef's knife back out. Uh, would you like to... Now is the turn's flipped over to the players now. Can I rage and attack back, please? All right, because you're below around half or below your hit points, you are I'm now exactly in a at uh, you're at half exactly your hit points. Out. Now you're in a relentless rage state, so you take half damage and deal a wep extra weapon damage die for your attacks. So go ahead and do a revenge what attack. Does this man have? <laughs> He's a That's brute. A dirty twenty. Uh, Dirty 20 hits, so you roll your regular damage and then add additional weapon damage die to that because you're in a relentless rage state. So just yes. roll two dice? Yeah, roll two damage dice instead of one. Okay, that's an 11. 11. You, how do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, like like a, just a Hulk smash, double fist, just hammer fist down on him. You do, and bones scatter and clatter all over the floor. Ending this combat. You know the dry bones death sound effect? Does it... <laughs> uh, she's gonna, like, let's gonna immediately walk over to our, uh, the dwarven friend. And, um, she's gonna look at I'm still butt. smashing. <laughs> it's like, she's not even concerned with the smash. She's just, like, carefully avoiding the bits of, like, bone fragments flying everywhere. And she's gonna grab, like, a paste out of her pouch and, like, smear it on this wound. Can use a very small portion of her magic and just get this like, um, into it, like a little. There's this. Body. Literally, just one puts me over half and I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, take a choke off. <laughs> uh, you gain back nine health. Nice. That's almost like four. Thank you. Alright. Yeah. There's a little curtain now. Just... Alright. Kingsley, you did great. Yeah. Uh, he is surrounded by a bunch of dead skeletons and he's gonna skitter away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pat Kingsley well, on the head. I'd rather a dead skeleton than a live skeleton. But they're already dead. So they're dead, dead. Yeah. Uh, before. Dead, then un dead, dead, then undead. You know? Ah, okay. This is the um, before we continue on, and I Kingsley starts scavenging around this area trying to find anything of use. Sure, go ahead and make a perception check, and since because of your wanderer background, you can add a D4 to the check. Yeah, I can. What's up, Lavina? I would prefer some healing. My armor took most of the damage, but yeah, healing would be nice. Okay. Lavina nods, and that same energy that you saw her take from the skeleton, it kind of feels like she recycles a little bit, and she mixes it in with mud, making it look like a healing face, and she's gonna gently pat it on your wound. Alrighty. Okay. So That's go ahead and roll a D to see how much hit points he regains. Three, so you, you gain three, and that uses your second use of it. So. How do you feel? Do you feel any better? Much better. Thank you. Of course. Uh, that is a twenty-one. 
21. Uh, you can scavenge some of the rusty blade. You can either scavenge some rusty blade parts. You can also scavenge some the actual skeletal bones if you wish. Or you can even scavenge the scrap metal off of the skeletons at the upper right over here. Other, everything else is either like some wood or what have you. But nothing else worth of value that you could search throughout this room. <laughs> yeah, you got you got a pile of bones to your inventory now. All right, what do you guys do? I say we go to the top right door. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, that one. Do you want to go first, or should I? Uh oh. Sorry, I was um I was contemplating my ma smashing here. One second. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. Alrighty. As the yeah, I'll go. as you guys enter the precipice, I'll reveal more. One, two, three, four, five. Alright. I'll reveal as much as uh just as character goes, because he is the main light source. Okay. I'll keep on going. Alrighty. That's all good. You can do that. Alrighty. You guys can move your tokens a bit. As you get over here, there's two paths. You're coming out of crossroads. So you, there's a door here. And then there's... And there's a continued hallway down this way. And as you guys look down... This hallway in particular, you can see that what would have been like, it's a bunch of traps that were seem to be already triggered. It seems there's like darts on the ground. There's like a pendulum that is already triggered right in the middle here. It seems like this whole hallway was just full of traps that was already triggered, and you could tell it hasn't been reset in quite a very long time. Like some of the darts and some of the and the pendulum blade itself is pretty rusty. Let's see. Well, that's. Yeah. Yes, Good stuff. I thought we were just leaving. Let's get out of here. Yes, please. I agree. Why is Lado back there? <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. <laughs> As you open the door, you come across what seems like to be a study room. You see a broken table along with a skeletal butler just chilling next to a chair in front of a broken furnace and what the shelves used to be bookcases now ceases to have nothing occupied excuse me sir can you help me find something it looks over to you uh, I'm looking for a book but I forget the title he still like stares at you confused It shakes his head, yes. Can you point me with the direction? He points towards this general direction. That entryway you came out of. Can you point me the direction of any valuables? He, it scratches its skull head for a moment, and then it points down to this direction. But then he shrugs. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, Too hard of an adventurer. Oh, hold on, Sam. You're going too far. <laughs> All right. Uh, say again. All right. He takes the spoon and he pockets it. He nods to you. He turns back to the empty, broken fireplace. <laughs> oh, there's there's two ladles. Oh shit. The cloning. <laughs> There's another halfling in that backpack. I knew it. 
<laughs> it's two halflings in the trench coat. Alrighty, you open the door, and as it does, there's a hallway. One that leads left, and one that leads straight. Uh, I see left. Left is first. Yes, left. Well, All this right. would be right, that, but still. That surely right. can't be the logic we're gonna go with to navigate us out of here, is it? It has worked so far, hasn't it? Alright, you're gonna go left? You're gonna go this way? Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> you see another door. Let's open it. <laughs> you, when behind you... door number one. What's behind door number one? That's a great question. I guess we have to wait till the next session. Oh. <laughs> so, it was a, this was a very f fun first session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So I hope you guys enjoyed this session. I hope the audience has enjoyed it. And tune in next time when we do another episode. Episode 2 of The Dead Realms. It's already getting heated up. And it's just the start. So until then guys. I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.